Good evening and welcome to the Lubogaisky Hour. I am happy to be back in Pristina to examine important global and local developments that affect the lives of all Kosovars. And today on the Bugaisky hot seat, I will be focusing on an important domestic question. Our subject is the position of women in Kosovo society, and our three guests are Mimoza Kusari Lila, head of Alternativa, Flora Matsula, head of the office at UN Women, and Yeta Krasnici, project manager at the Kosovo Democratic Institute and Transparency International. But first, my political commentary on a key international topic is entitled, In Defense of National Independence. This year marks the 100th anniversary of the emergence of independent states across Central and Eastern Europe, following the collapse of the Russian, German, Austrian and Ottoman empires. For many of these countries, independence continued to be thwarted throughout the 20th century, until the Soviet empire collapsed almost 30 years ago. Given the ambitions of Europe's last imperialist, Russia, and the disastrous consequences of tolerating a predatory power, NATO's mission of strengthening the security of each member is as vital today as defending Western Europe was during the Cold War. The political revolutions of 1989 to 1991 ensured the national liberation of 21 countries from Moscow's dominance and a further seven freed states when Yugoslavia splintered. And while communism is a fading nightmare, the struggle to maintain state independence continues to this day. Vladimir Putin's regime seeks to reverse the transformation of the post-Cold War era, during which Russia lost its satellites, forfeited its regional predominance, and relinquished its global role. Moscow tries to partition the West, and one method is to drive wedges between America and Europe. History is perversely inverted in claims that Washington has limited the sovereignty of European countries. In reality, for the past century, America has sacrificed its blood and treasure in defending Europe's independence, and it remains committed to NATO as the most effective protector of statehood. To compensate for its military inferiority, Moscow exploits Western vulnerabilities through cyber attacks, espionage, disinformation, corruption, and other so-called soft power tools. Kremlin interference in US presidential elections is merely the exposed tip of an iceberg of anti-Western subversion. The goal is to promote division in domestic politics and to paralyze foreign policy. Kremlin information warfare also promotes an anti-EU agenda to divide Europe and impede a common diplomatic front towards Russia. Propaganda campaigns against liberalism appeal to conservative and nationalist constituencies in which Russia is portrayed as a Christian bulwark. Energy deals and business enticements are designed to enmesh states in Kremlin projects and lessen their opposition to Moscow's foreign policy. And threats of nuclear war are intended to pacify Western politicians and prevent them from reinforcing NATO's eastern flank. Any surge of nationalism and populism in Europe favors the Kremlin's regional objectives by weakening democratic institutions, exposing them to corruption, and undermining the pursuit of a common transatlantic security policy. Without a unified NATO to which every ally makes contributions, commensurate with their capabilities, the independence of each member becomes endangered. It is time now for the Bugaisky hot seat, examining the position of women in Kosovo society with my special guests, three special guests, Mimoza Kusari Lila, head of Alternativa, uh, Flora Matsula, head of office at UN Women, and Yeta Krasnici, project manager at the Kosovo Democratic Institute and Transparency International. Uh, welcome and thank you for joining me on the show. Thank you for having thank us. You. Well, we have a, a huge and important topic today, not just for Kosovo, but I would say the entire world. Let me start with a sort of general question. Uh, has the role of women in Kosovo society, would you say, changed since the end of Yugoslavia, uh, the liberation from Milosevic's Serbia, since independence, national independence? Maybe start with, uh, maybe start with you, Mimosa. Uh, 
Yes, it definitely has changed. Whether it has improved, um, mm -hmm. I cannot say that or conclude that, but it definitely had gone from one phase to another. Actually, women have been, um, in particular in the recent history of Kosovo, accelerator of uh, a lot of processes, participants, but mm -hmm. never had actually um, taken credit nor required more space in public life in Kosovo. Um, if you look in the general uh, the status in terms of uh, education, uh, position, uh, I'm not content with the fact that we actually could have done much more as a society and then also because that as a society we come from a former communist slash so socialist mm -hmm. system where more or less access to education or working places were somehow equal. Whereas with open democracy, we cannot say that it went in being equal, it actually deteriorated with men being more of mm. the center. Uh, but actually in, in public life that we had uh, a presence and definitely uh, women have set a new standard in Kosovo, at least I think. In the recent history, in institu institutional life, I think there are good examples of women being uh, uh, sort of uh, an office holder, but also performing well. Uh, but still not to the extent or to the number that we can actually say that uh, we are happy with the position of women in our society. Mm. Fl Flora, you may remember a communist society, uh, as I do, where women were nominally technically equal, uh, but in fact they performed more work as they did a lot of the housework as well as working outside the house. How would you compare situation under communist times compared to now? No, in that, uh, in that time, regarding laws, it was okay. Because uh, laws were equal for everyone, but when we came to the application of laws, the social role of women were deeply rooted and they were in charge of both being productive outside of house mm -hmm. and working in the house. Indeed, it was enforced by, by uh, society. Being uh, good to women was being very good at in the morning, you know, uh, doing all uh, work at the house before you go out, mm -hmm. and then being also uh, that one that will, uh, when you come back, also take over mm -hmm. everything, uh, like uh, the cooking for family, taking care about family members, and everything else. Children but so just yeah. maybe to mention that mm -hmm. for m almost two d decades, Kosovo went through parallel transitions, uh, that global market economy and establishment of the democracy that uh, somehow impacted everyday political, economical and social life. But also it was uh, brought tremendous benefits and changes, positive changes that indeed, when we talk about uh, gender equality, indeed worsened the, 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 the situation because women did not benefit equal from this transition. They, even today, even there, there are some progress. I think that is a, a lot of, uh, to be done. So these things are not happening just in case. Its root causes are gender inequality mm -hmm. and especially gender relations, mm -hmm. power relations. This, mm -hmm. this is not changing or it's minimal change when we talk about. So I can say that in that time, gender equality was treated in general, but not gender equity. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, this kind of uh, change, uh, transformations indeed also support the, 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 the changes of roles that indeed women's, uh, women organizations and women activists use mm -hmm. uh, this uh, opportunity and of course, we have some progress that we can talk later. Yeah, yeah. Yetta, how do you see the situation? Have, have things changed for the positive over the past few years? Well, I believe to some extent they have because, as it was mentioned also before, now we live in a free, independent, democratic state. So while in the past three decades we have been in transition, first we had uh, from 81 until onwards now, we lived in a parallel oppression, then war, and then in a post-war uh, society. So all this kind of situation, political situation also, 
somehow determine the social economic uh, situation of the society as a whole, but also have a greater impact on gender balance and gender equality in general. We see that women have, um, uh, when it comes to legislation, women have um, quite um, I important and, and equal role in, in cost of a society, but of course the problem is the implementation of laws and mm -hmm. most of all is also still it is also the mentality and uh, when it comes to having women as equals partic participants in all spheres of life. We see women uh, here and there taking positions, especially taking positions when there are political crises or when there is mandatory by, by uh, legal obligations, like in the case of um, uh, well, lists on, on women who have to be part of, as MPs uh, by political parties, Otherwise, we don't see, we lack a political will by, by in general, to see women as part of the decision-making table. But um, in, in all, I would say that in general, women, despite of the fact that the environment is not always friendly, they have shown that they are committed, determined to take their place in the table and to do it in a way showing that this is their rightful place and that they are not given some kind of uh, some kind of privileges that they have the right to be there and that they would contribute in improving a society. From my perspective, I of course see it as the only way how you can progress a society because it is absurd to think that you can have a democratic, uh, social well-being, progress, economic progress if you don't involve the 50% of the society. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, of course, there has been a lot done, but there are still much to be done uh, uh, to create space for youth and, and women, uh, because uh, that's the only way how we can move forward. Mm -hmm. Yet I want to pick up on mm -hmm. the politics in a minute, but uh, let me go back to what you mentioned, legislation. Is there actual specific legislation on gender equality? Uh, and if so, presumably women have recourse to the courts in cases of discrimination. Is this, is this used? Is this applied? Um, actually, there, there are several uh, approaches. It is the uh, gender equality law, uh, the one that it actually basically, uh, in principle, foresees that uh, representation should be equal, 50-50. Um, and that uh, would actually involve the uh, public institutions, public boards, uh, uh, public enterprises. But then also there is a law on heritage that actually uh, also equally treats uh, uh, boys and girls, men and women. Um, and that is the case when uh, oftentimes uh, women go to court. Uh, not as often as we would want or not as often as one might imply to have an equal society, but on the cases where you have a higher awareness or where they see that their uh, rights have been violated. Mm -hmm. Whereas now, as we speak, I've actually, uh, from the uh, Committee for Economic Development, I've also proposed an article on the business organization law to have a representation of 40% of women in corporate boards. Uh, the, that article jointly with the law had passed, but the president had returned it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, to the parliament. So uh, there is now again in the session, and it, if it has to pass, it has to have 61 votes of members mm -hmm. of parliament. Uh, the president uh, had implied that it's actually against the constitution to give a certain uh, a group or a gender group a privilege, where actually it's the contrary. Our constitution is actually on the basis, the foundation of our constitution foresees that on marginalized group, be that on gender basis or ethnic basis, there might be uh, quotas or measures uh, imply, implied that it actually would uh, bring the status to equality. So mm -hmm. this, what we see is the, the deep down, it's rooted uh, the misogyny of the decision makers in terms of, okay, well, we're moving forward, but not to the extent where the certain interest might be uh, sort of touched upon. Mm -hmm. And in this regard, I think the lobby of different business organization not to have the article passed had made the precedent to return it. But it's going to be very interesting, the debate, and also to see whether we will be able to pass. I think it's just a matter of time. Uh, eventually, we'll come to that mm -hmm. point. As EU countries we see move toward uh, that part of having more economic empowerment for women as well and putting it in mandatory in their legislation. But that only shows uh, the challenges that we face in Kosovo society. That mm -hmm. actually, when we have, for example, gender equality law uh, that foresees 50-50% uh, uh, representation, but it's not implemented, 
um, it's not being sent to courts. Um, everyone feels fine about it, but now when it comes time to actually have something that will touch upon business interest and immediately will be uh, translated into women directly being involved strategically, mm -hmm. not just as the number, but actually the corporate boards where the decisions are made. Mm -hmm. Then you have this, all of a sudden, the mobilization and reaction of strong men and actually, no, 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 this is something that we are entitled to, you're not getting in here. Mm -hmm. Flora, how do you <coughs> see legal protection for women? Um, first of all, I think we were Kosovo were exposed to international community and, and to different uh, requirements from international uh, partners. And lately, of course, following e EU integration path. And, and this is, I, I will go back to the power relations. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, impacted and with big support of, of, of uh, civil society organization push for uh, to have really include norms and standards, international norms and standards in, in our, in Kosovo legislation. But in practice, we have limited uh, implementation and this is very related to, to, to the uh, relation and, and mentality because uh, the laws and programs should not be developed to satisfy mm -hmm. someone outside of Kosovo, but for people here and to be responsive to the needs and to, uh, to the barriers, to uh, uh, raise the barriers that uh, different categories are facing with. For example, in the Constitution, we have uh, uh, seven conventions in Article 22 and human rights declaration, human rights, uh, universal human rights declarations. And one of the uh, conventions is uh, CEDAW, uh, Convention for Elimination of Discrimination of All Forms uh, Against Women. And it is in, in, in case they are of conflict with local uh, laws, they, are, they have power. Where they, it, it was used, CEDAW, never. Mm. In the court. So this is first. Then we have gender equality law, 50-50%. Then we have anti-discrimination law, then we have a law against, uh, against domestic violence, and we have different strategies that, uh, first of all, because it's not priority, and maybe because of misunderstanding, they, uh, they are not uh, supported by f financial instruments. And this is the problem. You cannot do anything if you do not, between the, the practice and law, establish a mechanism that will make applicable the law or program. And this is missing because of also misunderstanding, uh, telling we will do something and later we will talk about gender. Gender should be mainstream everywhere, in every each, every each action, in all spheres, because 50% of population are women, they are facing different barriers. If we talk about property rights, if we about inheritance, access to resources, access to uh, education, mm -hmm. totally different reality, and this is not reflecting. <coughs> so this is one of the, the of course, there are uh, good actions, and there are things that we, together with government and civil society, we applied, but uh, it will take a lot of time, really, to, to get, or to have that cons conscious of, of our um, old partners that, uh, it's not about, as I said, to satisfy outside of Kosovo community, it's about to respond to the needs of people, all categories, especially the most marginalized ones. Mm -hmm. Yetta, turning to politics, mm -hmm. um, how would you assess the involvement, uh, participation of women in political life? I is this growing? Is it uh, inadequate? Is it token involvement? I mean, how would you describe it? I wouldn't say that it's actually growing because what we saw since the end of the war and, and even, as I said, in the 90s was that women were part of social movements, the political movements. They were the ones who were raising their voice for democracy, for the rights of all citizens, for peace. Mm -hmm. And they were hand in hand somehow, shoulder to shoulder, uh, having their fight for Kosovo with the men. And when we saw women, when it came after the war, they were 
totally left outside of the decision-making table and in peace-building processes. We have seen that in, in between, in meanwhile, we have had women who have taken uh, lead um, positions, like the president, the former president of the country, the minister of dialogue, the minister for Europe, uh, European integration, the trade and, and industry, and, and deputy prime minister that we have also here, uh, uh, Mimosa Kusare Lila. But we have not seen that this is some kind of systematic. This is more on mm. an uh, ad hoc basis and it's, not, it's more of an exception to the rule. Mm -hmm. So we have still not gone to the point of actually seeing the policies of this country as a way of seeing women part of it. Gender equality is still regarded as a secondary hand issue that when women are there are just to fulfill some quota. You were talking about legislation before and the, the law and, and gender equality foresees equal representation, so 50%. And we have seen that last two uh, pair of elections, the, the law that was implemented, the law on elections, required a 30% quota. So there was a discrepancy mm -hmm. between both legislation. While the le law on gender equality clearly states that this is the law that should be considered, mm -hmm. you saw that you know political parties, but also central um, election com uh, commission was not willing to to implement the law on gender equality and have a, a, a equal representation uh, list. We also see it now with the government. There are 22 plus ministers and there are only two women and mm. there are 70 plus deputy ministers and I don't know there's only four uh, deputy mm. ministers. So it is still uh, we lack the political will, and of course it's a mentality, and you have to change the mentality, but you lack most of all the political will, because it seems like, as Flora was saying, a power struggle. It feels like mm. if women come, then it's taking the position of a man, but this should not be the case, because you know, if women come, it's, they are taking their mm -hmm. own position, it's their right, so they have, are exercising their right. We are equal citizens of this country, and we have equal obligations mm. to move forward. It's this not country. a zero-sum option. No, it's <laughs> not. It's a actually a win-win situation. So, Mimosa, from the inside, how do you see this? I mean, from within the political structure, uh, what can be done? Let's put it this way: What can be done to uh, enhance the involvement of women starting at an early age in political life? Actually, all it can be done. I mean, the only uh, or the best thing is the political will and the openness toward women in politics. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm. I mean, I can say that from the most recent experience, being a, uh, a chairwoman or a head of uh, a political party, uh, you see that as long as you're open and as long as you actually offer equal opportunities, women also will be elected. Mm -hmm. And I've mentioned this several times that uh, I've seen it uh, uh, sort of uh, implemented and realize that people will vote women as long as women are available on the list. Like, we, I'll, I'll mention only two cases. In the, uh, in the party structure, we actually, we also in our statute, we have a quota. But in the party structure, because we had the list of uh, men and women uh, being equally represented, we managed that despite, I mean, we, and we did not have any specific lining on the, uh, on the General Assembly, but we managed to have in our presidency almost 50-50 the representation of mm -hmm. women, the presidency of the party. And in the general council, we have uh, close to 40% mm. of women directly being elected. Um, and we had the most, uh, the, the most uh, prime example in local elections when in municipality of Jakova in the list, because we had uh, out of 38, 20 women and 18 men, mm -hmm. we were able to elect, or they were elected four women and two men. So it's the mm. first political group in the local assembly that is double mm. number of women than men represented in one political party. Mm -hmm. And that happened because women were out there, uh, because you had women on the list, were well represented, and actually they did not have the feeling that they're just there because they have to fill in the quota, but mm. they're there because they've been appreciated and because they have something to contribute. And I think oftentimes political parties being the one, like I've been in also in another political party where it has more conservative approach. And then you see that women feel that, okay, we're there because we have to fill this number. Mm. And as long as we get that in 30% and we get to get elected with definitely much less votes, as long as we have a seat, it's fine. Mm. And then in the decision making, we owe it all to the party and to the party leader. So even I, I see it, the most problematic approach of women in decision making when they actually have the power, 
hold the office, but they feel they are entitled to actually report to someone else, not look into that actually you have your own constituency. Mm -hmm. You have to uh, believe that you're equal and you're equally to contribute uh, in a democracy. I mean, say your yeah. opinion and your opinion should be in line, okay, with political party, but not necessarily be dictated by the political mm -hmm. party. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes in the parliament, we have this situation when we actually have the 30% uh, because we have the quota, right. but also not have them independently think. For me, it's more worrisome the uh, approach after they get elected mm. uh, because uh, oftentimes, <coughs> like in the article that I mentioned, I had women from political parties that actually did not vote for, for the article on 40% of women representation just because they were told by the leaders of their parties mm. that you, we are not voting this, we're not supporting this. Mm. Flora? Maybe just, and, and there is a more and more lack of solidarity between women, I must admit, you know, this is uh, also another it's increasing. <laughs> increasing a lack of solidarity. The lack is increasing or, the, or solidarity is increasing? Lack of solidarity is more and more happening between uh -huh. women. So uh -huh. this is also impacted. And uh, let's say that, that, that what are temporary measures that should be moved after we have mm -hmm. reached the, the critical mass of women? Mm -hmm. And because when we talk about the elections, it was directly women voted by uh, uh, were uh, around 14 percent. Yes, those that were not Directly. in because of quota, but they yes, were yes, able to get yes. the votes themselves. And, and yeah. thanks God we have model like Mimosa and others that are strong women. Also, Yeta could be a model for uh, women participation, but the issue is that the key of empowerment of women that will be reflected also their positions in executive mm -hmm. level mm -hmm. is democratization of political parties mm -hmm. and empowerment of women within political par parties because mm -hmm. it's not happening. What is happening, for example, is that during the elections, mm -hmm. even women are 30 percent, they are hunting different women mm -hmm. from different um, uh, fields, you know, and then I don't think that they are getting 30 percent of budget that are dedicated mm -hmm. to party to run the elections. No. Mm -hmm. they, they are not, we know, you know, access to, to property rights, it's around 8 percent of mm -hmm. women in, in Kosovo and this is because of, you know, mentality here. So women, not all women, maybe one percent or two, they have some kind of resource to run the elections. So it's not at all fair, you know, competition mm -hmm. and then Again, they are doing because of quota, but not because that women should uh, represent 50% of population of women and girls. So absolutely, I think, uh, from th since I was involved before, during and after the war in Kosovo with women in politics, there are a lot of changes. For example, when we developed uh, the first, uh, it was the first strategy in Kosovo in 2002, it was strategy for gender equality uh, that I uh, facilitated and, and, and bring together women in politics, civil society, in business, government, young, yeah. uh, uh, Serbian together. Yes, 10 days to, to, yes, to develop uh, that. Uh, and you know what was the question? Why we need this strategy? Why you are dividing women and men? We should treat it family. And these women today are really strong advocates mm -hmm. on gender equality because it was new concept. Mm -hmm. So they are changing, or they said, no, 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 our friends in political parties will not forget us, mm -hmm. we will be elected. And then they slowly face to the reality, but thanks God we have a young generation, an old one, women activists who used to be before and during the war, and a young generation who are very strong, very well educated, strong advocates, and uh, I, I am very optimistic that it will be changed slowly uh, but of course it should be work, it's not all parties are uh, uh, led by women like Mimosa and Edita, but for bigger parties we need to work and, and, and help them to, mm -hmm. to, to work and, and democratize, uh, to, 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 for uh, democratic processes within the parties. Right, right. Yet I want to turn to the economy mm -hmm. uh, and business. I mean, there's Transparency International to ask mm -hmm. are women less corrupt than men, but maybe you can bring this in. But let me ask you a, a, a big question. Uh, are there many women entrepreneurs or uh, women in high positions mm -hmm. in, in business, CEOs and so forth, or is this still largely a province of men? 
Well, I mean, as we have mentioned here before, the, the access to finances and access to property is one of the biggest problems that mm -hmm. women face in Kosovo. The women have just um, maybe 12, 13 percent of property they own uh, mm -hmm. in Kosovo, and inheritance is still a, an issue that we are facing. And there are, of course, affirmative measures that are being in, and campaigns that are trying to fight with the mentality and, and have an equal uh, share of, of the inheritance and uh, by, by the g boy and the girl. But the problem then leads also then the opportunities that women have to, have to develop a business. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, we know that if you want to start a business, you need to have some kind of financial means and Capital. endowment. You yeah. need to access to finances, mm -hmm. to, to resources. So that creates uh, um, immediately a bar barrier for the women to, to compete equally, but also to um, exercise their role also in this sector. But in general, we see that the younger generations are more prone to... to being part of the of the business sector, we see that the young girls are more into IT sector. Uh, we have women coding. There are mm -hmm. uh, different organizations so into this, this kind of services. But um, uh, we also see women, very strong women, who lead the media sector. We have a uh, mm -hmm. uh, few of the biggest uh, media um, and TV station here in Kosovo that our, our CEOs are women. So we see women there, but this is, as I said, more of a sporadic uh, presence of women, not necessarily uh, the same, uh, not necessarily a fertile ground where we would say we see women equally. Because as, as Flora was saying before, it, it all starts where you know, they are not competing on the same ground because also a problem is access to education, the problem is uh, social mentality, and then there is a problem of uh, financial resources, the access to financial resources. Of course, the state has taken from time to time some kind of affirmative measures to give women mm -hmm. certain grants and uh, certain private uh, uh, banks have offered uh, a certain type of uh, uh, loans for women to be considered in the fact that they don't have the financial resources. But still, I would not say that women compete on the same ground, so they are not very much present and they are not very much playing a, a role in, in uh, you know, into the uh, private uh, sector in Kosovo. Mm -hmm. But of course we have to say that the private sector in Kosovo is still young, it's still evolving, it's still developing, and of course I will go back to saying that the only way how you can progress it is of course by having women, young girls and women access education firstly, uh, mm -hmm. offering them the necessary uh, training capacities, developing, having uh, working along with this inheritance of property rights, but also creating measures which will create, then, uh, um, then create the ground for women to, to participate uh, in, in the business sector. Because as Laura was saying also in the political sector, it is not the, the same, it is not in the same race. It is a different type of race. And even though we see women in the ladder, uh, when, when we go, it's like a pyramid. You can have at the lower level more mm -hmm. women, uh, but then when you go up in the, uh, in the pyramid, you see l less women. Mm -hmm. so women might be present in the private sector, but maybe not, you at, know, high not, not at the high level, yeah. not taking the decisions. T uh, Mimosa, turning to pay rates. I mean, this is still a problem mm -hmm. in, in America. You know, we've had decades of campaigning by women for equal pay, for equal work. Uh, is this a problem in Kosovo as well? As we don't see private sector being uh, highly dominant toward the employment, and as women are targeting more employment in public sector, I would say that more is the uh, the problem of the pay rate. It's not as much as an issue. It's a problem of the position that the women apply or are represented in the public sector. Mm -hmm. uh, public sector remains, unfortunately, in Kosovo, the biggest employer, mm -hmm. and that still presents a huge discrepancy. If you want to look into the real qualification of do we have qualified women, because oftentimes even in the institutional uh, job openings, you would have. Uh, sort of uh, 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 gender portraits of positions like mm -hmm. would be requiring a female assistant per mm. se mm. or would be requiring a male director. Mm. So immediately in, in oh, Albanian in as it sounds, yeah exactly, it says assistente mm. meaning like you need a female, a mm. she assistant mm. or you need, uh, you need like opening up a position for a director or a director which would be a he. Mm. So 
In Kosovo, it's more the way how it's perceived, what are women uh, prepared for, mm -hmm. um, or roles. yes, gender roles, rather than uh, the the pay mm. uh, of uh, the pay scale, or whether women receive equal amount, like it's in the states, uh, 85 cent per dollar mm -hmm. of men uh, receiving. The other thing is also uh, on the discrimination we have on the working place. It's also toward the age of women. Uh, so women would be considered eligible to be hired from the age of 22 or 18 for that matter if it's a low position but it's like 23 all the way to 35 maybe but uh, mm. this uh, after that um, then when you would actually consider that women would have other commitments like they would become mothers or mm. would have family life then it's less likely to actually have them as mm -hmm. uh, sort of mm. credible for those positions per se uh, from what we see in the job openings. So there is a huge range uh, of problems that we need to mm. tackle in terms of the equality on the working place. But what's most important is actually to acknowledge the fact that what we've seen is in terms of the improvement, we've seen quite a lot of girls going to unconventional mm -hmm. uh, sort of uh, study fields or even uh, graduating and having a master from uh, science, uh, technical programming in Kosovo, it's increasing. And this is very encouraging uh, to see. And this has been some initiatives that started as very small and creative from either innovation centers or maker spaces that actually have offered access to girls mm. to uh, different uh, fields that were definitely considered, even in the developed world, considered as jobs for men. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the focus, if we had a government that is really focused toward uh, the element of creating equality, then we would see definitely more access in, in education and opportunities in these fields. Because I think you have to tackle this on the baseline. You cannot mm -hmm. just say that, okay, well, we hire some directors, of, definitely it will help, or appoint ministers, women. Mm -hmm. But if you want to make a societal change, you actually go there where actually the change can be in effect regardless of the government's mandate or term. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is something that the society needs right now. It's actually to start off at the time when you actually make equal opportunities for girls and boys and mm -hmm. tell them that they are equal. Whereas, mm -hmm. unfortunately, that doesn't happen still. But I see it as a, as a good potential uh, that girls are involved in uh, unconventional, uh, sort of until now, mm -hmm. uh, directions of studies. Flora, what, what more needs to be done to empower women in the economy? First of all, uh, I think uh, uh, wage gap is also here around 14 percent. Uh, Mimosa mentioned that it's because women are getting low-paid jobs. Mm -hmm. They are maybe also including in informal uh, businesses. Uh, and then somehow it's they are punished economically if they if they decide to become a mother mm -hmm. and this is huge issue that is under the discussion and i think uh, government should think about that because um, uh, young women are discriminated here we are talking about mostly about private sector because in public sector somehow they are it's but it's around 7000 Mm -hmm. All in total, 70,000 or 70,000. 70, 70, so it's not a big number. In private sector, they are punished, and that is not at all regulated by excusing that this is now, you know, uh, they will uh, lose the chance to, to, to build a career. While in Germany, in Sweden, they have three years maternity leave. Here is the problem. And then it's not care uh, 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 like uh, institutions for uh, uh, child care are what not. What is maternity leave here now? Uh, it is six months. It is under... On one year. Like currently it's one year. No, no. It's but six, months six months, 70%. Yes. Then you have three Sounds months. Paid, three yeah. months you have... Uh, 50%. 50 and then three months without payment. Mm. So this is that, that, you know, make bigger gap. Mm -hmm. So if you became mother you will lose and then it's very hard to go back to the career because there are not policies that will think about being women in Kosovo. Mm -hmm. It's meaning feeling equal under your skin mm -hmm. and not to be punished because you are young 
or because you have young children, immediately they are asking, do you have small children? Because they know they will be sick. They will. Now, this kind of things. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Or are you married or plan yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So this is one. Another is, as uh, uh, Mimosa said, is this age problem. It's mm -hmm. every, uh, like, call for application is up to 35 years. So meaning that I will not find the job <laughs> at all, <laughs> never, here, mm. if I <laughs> will lose my <laughs> current one. So, n but uh, just to, to, to mention, the, the, the most, uh, uh, the, the, the poverty is hitting women and girls here. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the most poor category in Kosovo are women. It's about economic security. Often time, maybe more than 50%, they are not controlling their own wage, their own earnings. It's controlled by husband, by extended family, whoever is the head of family, and uh, they don't have nothing. So it's about economic security, and it's about, um, again, it's about the structure of the family and then society mm -hmm. around that make very, very vulnerable women. Um, even I, there are some research showing that women are hired in some big private companies or whatever, you know, they have in the stores and after three months they get uh, kicked, out. kicked out without paying the wage, without, you know, and they are changing and they are really exposed to different things. But one thing that is also very, very important, they are very exposed to sexual harassment during the employment that it's... Yeah, I was going to come to this mm -hmm. actually with uh, okay. our Me, uh, Me Too movement mm -hmm. in America and so forth. L let me ask you a question mm -hmm. about uh, the educational system. Because mm -hmm. that is, in addition to traditional family uh, perceptions and roles of women and so on, education I think mm -hmm. is very important from an early age to make women feel equal, emboldened, empowered and mm -hmm. so forth. Mm -hmm. how, how, how is it? How would you characterize the educational system? Is it sufficient? Well, I think the education starts firstly at the family. I mm -hmm. mean, because this is where the bases are taken for, for, the, for children. And I think that families should start from there in the first steps, treating mm -hmm. their kids equally and, and mm -hmm. uh, making sure that they feel equal in this world, in, in the society, and that they are not immediately shown what are their different roles and what kind of roles mm -hmm. they should take in the society. And that is the first step that then goes on into the education being that from the early ages then also uh, later on in, in university and other stages. We see that still, I mean, uh, the idea of women having a different role of, or being, uh, having a set role in society, edu being educated for certain type of, of uh, fields of uh, being um, the ones who should do certain type of job is still part of the mentality in Kosovo. So women are, do not, they are not, I mean, even if you say that they are treated equally, the, the language that is used makes it, uh, so it expresses the fact that you have a different role in society mm. that you should play. Uh, we have seen that there, even in the university level, many times we have seen literature that has been discriminatory towards women, that have been used, that language has been used in such regard that has somehow shown that women have a different uh, role in society or that when it came for sexual violence or uh, sexual abuses, it was uh, in one of the books it was said that, you know, uh, expressing the way that women were dressed and then somehow inciting uh, an act upon it, uh, herself with the behavior. So um, we see that in the education it still mm -hmm. needs more to be done. Uh, we, we know that in... in um, in Western countries or more mostly in Nordic countries, there are initiatives to uh, in include the gender, gender curriculum into the education system in order to tackle this kind of problems that we are seeing every day of gender in in inequality, of gender mm -hmm. inequity. And I think that something like that could be very positive, of course, as, as well as in Kosovo. We do have a, a division somehow or a disbalance or between rural and urban areas mm. here in Kosovo and then we see that in the rural areas also the mobility of women is uh, from time to time a problem or mm -hmm. the access to education. We see that women for example have very high level of, of education or um, attendance in school till, uh, till high school but then when it comes to university drops 
or they would also attend university, but then when it comes to involving or uh, being participating into the labor market, there's a drop. So because of the social uh, norms, because mm -hmm. of the social role of, of being a, a wife and a, a caretaker and, and uh, a mother, so that also plays a role than seeing that women, you know, in, in the beginning maybe they are playing more equally than, than we see them, you know, somehow dropping out of the picture and being out of the picture. Mm -hmm. So education is key, of course, mm -hmm. because that breaks the, the vicious circle of, of poverty and of, of having women always in the same socioeconomic uh, uh, place or structure. Because an educated woman, then she will have more economic uh, benefits mm -hmm. that then will contribute to having educated children and then slowly, mm -hmm. slowly also breaking this this mentality, social the stereotypes, the stereotypes mm -hmm. and the social fabrics now of, of you know, of uh, misogyny and, and, mm -hmm. and uh, so I think education is, is key because that's, mm -hmm. that's how you then break, uh, break all barriers. Moza, how do you see education? Is it, uh, is there more involvement by, by young girls and women in, in the educational system? Uh, it certainly is, but I think one element that affects uh, boys and girls now in our system is the effect that it actually has been inherited from the time when we were oppressed under Milosevic's regime because one of the first uh, segment of life, public life that was tackled was education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think the effect of having a 10-year parallel system in education is actually producing uh, results that we don't want to see in young generation now because some of the students of that time are becoming teacher of this time. Mm -hmm. And the, for the fact that uh, not many of them had uh, access or possibility to get outside of Kosovo to see how's the modern education system created mm -hmm. or how's the new uh, techniques of teaching, what's the, the new approach toward changes in our society, be that cultural or societal uh, changes. So I think that in that element, uh, of course, there would be the first who would actually be affected are girls in the educational system. Uh, so, uh, the sort of if they are marginalized would be definitely first with girls. The, if, uh, the other element in education that affects directly, it is the economic um, situation in Kosovo. So, if a parent had to decide between higher education of girls and boys in the family, they would definitely choose boys. Uh, still is the case. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I see it as a, uh, it's still uh, a transformational. Uh, I don't see that we've reached a point where we can say that yes, we have a modern education system. We cannot say also that there has been no progress in the educational system, but we see that within the entire system of this small country called Kosovo, there is still controversies in the education. Mm -hmm. So then we mm -hmm. might have something completely uh, sort of uh, converse, conventional or very conservative in a more remote areas where we might have a different approach in more urban areas or bigger uh, towns in Kosovo. Mm. Uh, but still there is a need to have a, uh, a higher uh, level and quality in general. So the, f the first would be that, the, the second would be these other elements or breakouts that you actually need to have mm. uh, in order to, uh, to have a society open and actually think of the, the real European. Uh, we have this problem, I mean, in the, in it goes cross-border in terms of what's the identity of today's youngsters in Kosovo, mm -hmm. I mean, which side do they go? So in that effect, I would say that uh, as we have the transformational educational system still, uh, we would definitely see the impact also on, on gender issues. I only have a couple of minutes, there's so many other questions I want to ask, I think we have to do another show on this, but <laughs> I did want to get in the question, you mentioned this about sexual abuse of women. As you know, in America we've had this Me Too movement, yep. uh, which has been very effective, and it started by women finally uh, disclosing the harassment at work by prominent personalities, particularly in the entertainment industry, in business, media and so forth. Has this had an impact in Kosovo? Maybe be before that, because what is indeed caused this and what can cause all this sexual harassment, maybe just to add something, because we here we talk about formal education system and, and, and gender discrimination and how uh, women and men are p portrayed in textbooks everywhere, mm -hmm. but we have, you know, media and other, mm -hmm. other institutions who are huge, huge, uh, who have huge impact to the, to, mm -hmm. to the education and what, mm -hmm. how women are portrayed. In, in previous okay. system, it was, you can walk to the street and everyone from 15 to 80 will 
whistle or doing sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. And it was normal for this mm -hmm. Balkan Syrian. And then you have treated women in advertisement as sexual object all time and it's happening still and these are and, and uh, look the, the how young artists are varying during promotion of their songs it's another impact that showing mm -hmm. women as a sexual ob object, object. Mm -hmm. so these kind of things are impacting mm -hmm. uh, our life and, and, and impacting small children from early ages to t t t and we need to work on that Regarding sexual harassment, it's happening here in, in lately in Kosovo. The, 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 uh, it was a case in university. Uh, I think it was uh, also uh, caused by um, or caused by this Me Too movement, mm -hmm. triggered, but yes. uh, triggered mm -hmm. by a Me Too movement. But um, uh, the issue is that um, what is difference in in USA? It was raised by strong women with mm -hmm. personality and it was like domino the okay. effect and uh, others join and it, it, I really admire how they tackle this and, and for Kosovo even we I think Kosovo gender uh, study center uh, before mm -hmm. 10 years developed a sexual harassment policy and mm. uh, you know uh, uh, advocating with the government to include there are some here and there in the laws addressing sexual harassment but never yeah. never approached and now about university maybe <laughs> yeah very last word yet uh, i've been signaled one minute so we have th yeah. 60 seconds <laughs> <laughs> i have to leave you for next time <laughs> yet uh, please uh, in terms of sexual harassment me too movement what uh, impact does it have? well yeah. i mean um, kdi uh, only recently also um, drafted a new sexual against sexual uh, harassment regulation in order to step up somehow and raise awareness that this kind of cases should not be left unregarded or that should not be left unpunished because as, as Flora was saying this issue is not very well um, treated or it's not very well uh, um, stated in the cost of laws and in, in, the, uh, in the code of conduct and, and also in the whole legislation. The Me Too movement was a rightful movement, I can say, and there is also the Time's Up movement, which, which are movements which show the, the, the problems that women face every day and the hidden uh, problems behind the carpet. But uh, as I said, women are here to stay. We are 50% of the society, and uh, sooner or later we will take our, pl our place in the table. So. I mean, man should better get ready. On, on that positive <laughs> note, I really have to... <laughs> Maybe <laughs> just to say that sexual harassment <gasps> is happening yeah. in four, uh, four eyes. It's, it's, it's not something that it's yeah. exposed mm -hmm. and it's very... And it's happening from men having, you know, power, uh, you know. Fire. And yeah. yes, and, and this is very, very uh, big issue to have right legislation to address because it's very, very hard mm -hmm. for women to... It actually, yeah. you yeah. have to see the parliament the in front of cameras and oh, everyone sometimes. else. Yes. I, <laughs> most often, I yeah. see that I've, s I've scratched the surface. <laughs> there's a lot, there's a you <laughs> have to make a special a show only for this. Only for this. <laughs> yeah. I, I so. promise. Thank you very much for Thank joining you. me. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure talking. And I'm sure you, I'll have you back on again to, to discuss many other issues I wanted to cover I didn't get to. But unfortunately, we have come to the end of today's show. I have greatly enjoyed being with you and with my colleagues at RTK. Good night, everyone. Stay healthy, be productive, and remain optimistic. See you all very soon. Mira Pavshin.